Some words from Psalm 27. Love is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Love is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Teach me to be love as you are love. Lead me through any fear. Hold my hand as I walk through valleys of illusion each day that I may know your peace. Call upon the beloved. Be strong and trust in the heart's courage. Trust in the power of love, the beloved's unconditional and everlasting love for you. And as we breathe into these words, we know that love is the foundation of our being. It is the core of who we are. We come together in you, sweet spirit, beloved, that we may know you more fully in our hearts and express your love in our individual lives and in our world. We give thanks for the blessings of this day. We bless all who are your hands and feet that are out in the world actively participating in being love, raising their voices, and showing that we stand united for equality, for justice. Thank you for this spiritual community that we resonate in the depth of your presence as the foundation of our being, and so it is. Amen. Please join me in our opening statement of faith. And those of you who are joining us on Facebook, there is a link there that you can click and get the lyrics that the say-alongs and the lyrics for the service. So our opening statement of faith together. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good omnipotence, and I am one with that presence and power. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us this morning. Those of you joining us on Facebook as well as on YouTube, no matter where you are in the world, we are connected through the blessing of technology and the gift of being able to share this message. Uh, Unity honors the many paths that lead to the one God, and we know that there are a variety of ways that God expresses itself across spiritual traditions worldwide. We have in our sanctuary this morning, our worship, our celebration team is here with us. So we've got Barbara doing PowerPoint. David's on sound. It's good to see David. Nancy's kind of riding herd on technology, as is Andrea here for celebration of community. Trish is going to be for meditation. Steve holding consciousness. We have Sarah Stallman with us this morning as our soloist. So glad to have you here. And of course, Levi on piano. So yay. Yeah, and I just was, I was looking at the drums. I know they usually watch Gary. I miss you so much. You and Erlene, you know, I was just looking at the drums this morning and going, oh, gosh, but I know that you all tune in each week. Just wanted to acknowledge your presence because you've been so much a part, directly a part of music ministry. Each and every one of us are directly part of our music ministry as we join together in our congregation song. It's the beginning of the month, so we have a new song to begin with. So please, let's stand and sing together.
and just wave to all of you who are with us online. So good to have you, like we said already this morning. Yay! This day is a witness to my sacred purpose to all that I'm meant to be. Letting it in, letting it flow. This is the part of our service where we celebrate our community, Unity of Pasadena. Our vision, united in spirit, we are a beacon of love and light that catalyzes a global revolution. And say with me our mission statement, creating community, living love, teaching truth, serving spirit. Both statements represent our intention as a ministry. We have many ways to connect throughout the week. I will share a few highlights, but check our website calendar as we begin to post the latest happenings for fall. Okay, it's, it's in interesting that you would mention Gary because we could use a good drum roll right now. <laughs> so for our next slide, we have a new mobile app. Yay. It is a dedicated Unity of Pasadena mobile app. So this is how you would download the app. You text to 77977, and you enter as one whole word, Unity of Pasadena app, and then you follow the link to download the app and it will reside on your iPad or your iPhone, any mobile device that you have. Pardon? Exactly, yeah. Um, and the nice thing is, uh, from within the app, you can click on our Sunday live stream, so you can just watch them on your iPad or iPhone. Um, you can watch all of our videos that our prayer chaplains have recorded. Um, anything that we have posted on our website in terms of video will be there. Um, you can submit prayer requests. You can set up your donations, uh, recurring or one time. You can read all our latest church news. You can submit a connection card if you're new to the congregation to let us know you're there. And you can access our church calendar and register for events once we begin to post those there. So it's really cool, it interfaces with our website, so it's recognizable as Unity of Pasadena. Um, and with it, it'll take you directly to our Facebook or Instagram pages. It's all in your hands. So it will be way cool and we are very excited. This has been in the works for a couple months now. Um, and I will send out an email to everyone in the congregation so that we will have in writing the ways to access our app. So you'll have that right in front of you and you can follow those um, directions. Um, our second lovely announcement is something that is near and dear to all of us in the Unity community and that is our yearly World Day of Prayer. And that is going to be happening with the opening ceremony this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it's going to be online only at worlddayofprayer.org. Um, so mark your calendars. Um, it's going to happen on September 9th and 10th. And it's always a really, really special time to come together with our worldwide um, uh, unity community. 
Praying with others is a core practice in our ministry. If you would like to have prayer today, please enter your prayer requests on our website. Yes, in the app. <laughs> it's a very handy little prayer form, as you'll find out this afternoon. Um, and on our Friday weekly email at the bottom, you can find that link at all three places. Um, we hold all requests in prayer and then forward them on to Silent Unity, our 24-hour prayer ministry at Unity Village. And they'll be held in prayer for the next 30 days. So your requests are well prayed over and for. Um, Trish Bryant is our in-person prayer chaplain of the day and will be doing our meditation um, in a bit for us. Um, today's daily word, appropriately, is world peace. I imagine a world transformed by peace and love. World peace begins within my mind and my heart. Closing my eyes, I breathe deeply and envision every person bringing forth the love and peace in God. I see all the world's people surrounded by a healing light, and it transforms strife, anger, and division into reconciliation, peace, and unity. As I hold this vision, I see the entire world aglow with radiance. Harmony and cooperation heal the world's wounds and encourage love to flow in each person's heart. I carry this vision throughout my day. Divine love expressing as me sees oneness regardless of apparent differences. Divine wisdom and understanding illumine my thoughts, inspire my words, and guide me to act in ways that bring peace to the world. From Matthew 5, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. I invite you to allow your body to relax as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And leave us not into temptation but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My meditation today is dedicated to Reverend Karen. As you prepare for meditation, take a long, deep cleansing breath in and exhale out. As you breathe in again, feel the peace and calmness within your body. As you take another deep breath in, experience complete relaxation. And let my words be yours. Breathe slowly and say, home sweet home. My home is where the heart is. In the silence of my mind, my thoughts leave, lead to bittersweet changes taking place around me. As I prepare to leave a comfortable environment where my family and friends reside, I feel a little overwhelmed while still feeling excited. It's a new chapter in my life giving me a fresh new start. My God-given Imagination guides me to that calm spot where I am sitting in my perfect living space. I see each room. I note how spacious and beautiful my home is. My new environment is cozy peaceful, harmonious, full of light and good energy. Order in the home gives me serenity, making my home a sanctuary. Each window sheds its perfect light on me and my space. I imagine my family and friends laughing, sharing, and eating together. God truly resides in this home. I smile, a happy smile, as I go deeper into the silence, thanking God for his continued blessings on me. Thank you, God, for blessing my home, my family, my friends, my community, and the entire world.
As I open my eyes, I realize no matter how many times I leave my home, I am always happy to return to my peaceful and loving sanctuary where hopes, dreams, and love are made. While I am making so many wonderful and happy memories, it also represents security, safety, warmth, and healing. Home, sweet home. Yes, my home is where my heart is. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
<laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> I was trying not to look at Sarah <laughs> because I knew as soon as I did, because uh, she was already weepy and, oh, my goodness, house that built me. Ah. Hi. <laughs> This is the first in our series on embracing the evolutionary impulse, which is my fancy dancy way of saying change. <laughs> but you know, change, oftentimes when we think of it in that word, change, we can get kind of myopic in what it represents because oftentimes when I think of change, what goes along with it for me is attachment. You know, because there's something that, whether it be tangible or not, that I'm fond of and want to hold on to. In Buddhism, it, we are taught by Buddha that the root of all suffering really is attachment, this holding on to. So when I think about a word like change, which actually I'm going to be talking about more very, very specifically in a couple of weeks as ch, ch changes but when I think about change, I think more about this way that I have attachments. When I frame it in embracing the evolutionary impulse, for me anyway, there comes along with it an invitation to stand and be in something greater. It doesn't preclude that part of that human heart, the weepiness around a song like The House That Built Me, you know, of being able to touch into what's familiar to us. And in the case of this song, she's relating precious memories of touching into a place of familiarity, a place that shaped, helped shape who we are. And we are all shaped by those remembrances of our childhood, the places that were special for us. I know for me, growing up, you know, my brother, sister, and I, we, we loved climbing trees. My dad said he had three monkeys. <laughs> Because we were always climbing trees. And I can still, in my mind's eye, I can touch, I can go back and I can see this one particular place where we lived with a tree out front and a low-hanging branch that the three of us <laughs> climbed out on and were hanging on like this, swinging from it. Thankfully, not too high up off the ground because the branch broke. <laughs> and sent the three of us tumbling to the ground together, you know? A little scraped up, but not too much worse for the wear. So standing in the embrace of the evolutionary impulse isn't, doesn't preclude all of the tenderness that comes along with the nostalgic and maybe even idealistic places that we go within ourselves about what we touch, that are the memories that are meaningful to us, it simply says that it's an and. An and. To stand in the evolutionary impulse, which is the movement of the divine. It's the movement of the divine that never, ever ceases. If you hear me say nothing else today, if you hear me say nothing else, hear this. The evolutionary impulse is the movement of the divine which never ceases. Always, always, and in all ways, it is 
moving. It is ever refreshing itself. This is what the Apostle Paul was referring to when he said, I die daily. To be awakened, to awake anew, to awake fresh each day as a new creation. Again, touching into the Buddhist teachings, there's an anecdotal one along the lines of we never step in the river in the same place twice. Even if it's the same seemingly physical location, the water has moved, everything has moved. If I step in it again, it is not the same as what we stepped into previously. It is always moving. This, I believe, is the essence of what Jesus was trying to teach when he came and he talked about fulfilling the law and going beyond it. I believe that this is what Jesus was talking about, that he was interested in building around what is. The memory that is within our hearts of tree limbs breaking and landing on the ground, and I can kind of feel it, you know, and my mind goes there. It is what is. You and I, we are what is, and all of what we're talking about is built around what is. The who you are that we can tap into. These were the same principles that Frank Lloyd Wright brought into his architecture. This is an image of one of, a, one of the Frank Lloyd Wright homes. This is what Frank Lloyd Wright brought into his architecture, was building around what is. We don't have to leave it behind as such. It is always with us. And the same is true of Unity of Pasadena. I want to touch on some words from Paramahansa Yogananda in his commentaries on Jesus' teachings. He says this, the eternal laws of spirit governing human life and the cosmic order. Okay, so there are these eternal laws of spirit governing human life and the cosmic order. Paramahansa says, from the voices of the prophets, there were proclamations of the eternal truths which are changeless, creedless, and universally applicable in all epochs. There are codes of conduct that are needed in a particular age or set of circumstances, an adaptation of the eternal verities to the specifics of human need. So it's changeless and yet adaptable to what is and what is presenting itself as it emerges. He says, too, the Christ intelligence is the eternal principle governing all created manifestations, timeless. Also are these precepts of spiritual living declared by the Christ in Jesus extending from the biblical generations into the unseen future. Paramahansa continues to say that Moses fulfilled his special mission in the enunciation of the universal commandments of God. Jesus came to reveal the Christ consciousness that maintains those laws in all of creation, the goodness, and the truth that manifests as harmony, joy, and perfection whenever those dictums are fulfilled. Jesus said he came to fulfill the law by reminding us and asking us to turn from the outer to the inner. To turn from the outer to the inner. He recognized that Moses had a mission to fulfill, just as Paramahansa was talking about. He spoke of, and Moses brought forth the commandments of God that dictated the codes of behavior. Absolutely, we need and we want those. They were exterior commands that Jesus says, let us appropriate these. We do not leave them behind, yet we turn to the interior to reveal the Christ consciousness that is within us and therefore maintains all that is in creation. It is the underlying essence of what we are. Home 
is where the heart is. Home is what is represented by what is within us. That yes, we can touch something important in our human experience while at the same time embracing that movement of the divine, the beloved, that never ceases. Now, part of what Miranda mentions in the song is how her mom cut out images from Home and Gardens magazine. <laughs> okay, HGTV. Home and Gardens television. I, am a, I confess, it's one of my, you know, kind of mindless in a way, just sit in front of the TV, watch all these different design shows. I love them. I think Drew and Jonathan are just the cutest things ever. All right? I mean, I think it's fabulous that Drew is dating Doe, Joey, Zoe Deschanel. All right? I'm like, oh, yay. And, you know, I love House Hunters still, whether it's domestic or international. And what happens on these different shows is whenever there's a need to do a remodel, the place where they focus the most attention is the kitchen. The kitchen. Because we gather there. We gather, we break bread, we share stories, we sit around the table or the island, you know. And we break bread and we share with one another. We do this in the kitchen, we do this in a spiritual community. Even though we're having to do it remotely, we are still sharing with each other. It is the same principle. It is the same principle, although the circumstances may look a little different. These interior and exterior ways of engaging are just a continuous circle, a continuous flow of working with what is. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 48, and I'm not going to read all the verses to you, don't worry. <laughs> you don't need to pull out your Snickers bars. But he says this point that I was making, do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. To fulfill. For truly I tell you, that's code for listen up, right? I've said that before. Truly I tell you is code for listen up until heaven and earth pass away. Not one iota, not one stroke will pass from the law until it is all accomplished. He says, let us be called to the kingdom of heaven that we do and we teach these great truths. And throughout his teaching in this section, he refers to the outer law and then takes it to the deeper inner spiritual truth. He says, you have heard it said in the ancient times, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable. But I say to you that if you are angry, with a brother or a sister. Something that's going on within, you are liable. And so, when you give your gift of offering at the altar, if you remember that your brother or your sister has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go and make peace. Go and make peace and then come to terms quickly and then come give your offering because it's what's inside. What's inside is what we want to be focused on and what matters because what it is that's on the inside is what comes out of us. May I see with the eyes of love. May I hear with the ears of love. May I speak with the words of love. May love be in my heart. We are to turn away from the outer and go to the inner and be reconciled within. I mentioned Frank Lloyd Wright because he was an amazing, astounding um, architect. One of the things that he said from when he was a child, that he would play with the cube, the sphere, the triangle, 
that were the smooth maple wood blocks. He says, all are in my fingers to this day. I soon became susceptible to a constructive pattern evolving in everything I saw. I learned to see this way, to see in this way. And when I did, I did not care to draw casual incidentals of nature. I wanted to design. Embracing the evolutionary impulse is an invitation for us to design to create, to allow what is emerging to take form through us and let it surprise us. Let it be unusual. Part of the hallmark of his design was that he would work with the unusual here in Pasadena. One of many of Frank Lloyd Wright's designs and architecture, but here in Pasadena is the Millard House, which was constructed in 1923, and this was what was exciting, what was interesting, and what was so different about it, is that he wanted to expand the way people saw him as simply a designer of a prairie-style home, and he turned to the concrete block. I remember, as a kid growing up, having concrete block bookcases. The concrete blocks on either side with the planks of wood, Andrea's shaking her head. I mean, like it was a phenomenon of the 70s, right? You know, that everybody had concrete block. I remember in one of the homes that I lived in with my daughter, we had concrete block, you know, holding up, it was our entertainment center, holding up the record player, the turntable, okay, and the television, you know. Oh my God, he turned to the concrete block as his building material. He write, wrote in his autobiography that he chose to build with concrete blocks because they were the cheapest and the ugliest thing in the building world. And he wanted to see, quote unquote, what could be done with that gutter rat. And so he chose this. In seeking to integrate the land that surrounded the building that was to be the Millard House, he designed the home to cling, to be connected to the lot's steep ravine, nestled it among the trees, and fabricated the concrete blocks using sand, gravel, and minerals found on the property. See, we work with what is. We don't have to leave behind in that respect. We pull it forward. We bring it with us. The initial critical response to the Millard House and its textile block structure was not positive. Sometimes when we're doing something really far afield of what people are expecting to be in the ordinary, as they say, these homes that he was building out of the gutter rat material were greeted with howls of laughter. As the Beaux Arts trained architects were appalled to see such a common building material used for facades and interior walls of expensive homes. And yet Wright said himself, I would rather have built this little house, referring specifically to the Millard house, than St. Peter's in Rome. And over the years, what became so laughable is now appreciated for its fine architecture and use of materials built around what is. I think about Unity of Pasadena in this first of our series on embracing the evolutionary impulse as we are moving each week toward the end of September and the time where we will be saying goodbye to one another. While I go into retirement from church ministry, I think about Unity of Pasadena and while we certainly can become quickly connected and attached to what we've experienced together. And there are some of you who are here who know this already, but I'm gonna say it anyway. 
Unity of Pasadena existed long before, and it shall exist long after September 27th. Unity of Pasadena was an idea in the mind and in the hearts of Lily and William Stack and Gertrude Hall in 1939, where they began meeting here in Pasadena in people's homes until they were able to secure a property on Euclid Avenue. There came a point in time where they were no longer able to be in that location, and they said yes to the evolutionary impulse that was calling and pulling on them. And in 1963, the church that was on Washington Avenue that was built, literally built by members of the congregation using concrete blocks. Steve Aker is raising his hand because he was there, right? As your parents were there. I wish Lee Zebold were sitting here right now. Maybe Lee would be watching, but Lee's mother and father, Lee's mother, went around and solicited contributions from the local merchants. He said nobody could say no to his mother. You know? That church was built literally by people in this congregation, and I'm so glad that Steve is here today. You know, as a reminder to us of what I'm saying, a very tangible reminder that it existed long before and will continue. In 1978, the name was changed from the Unity Society of Pasadena to Unity Church of Pasadena. And once again, saying yes to the evolutionary impulse that was pulling and changing with the times, being available to what was emerging. In 1984, it was changed from Unity Church of Pasadena to Unity of Pasadena. 1989 brought Marilyn Roth, who was here until 2011, 2012. And then between Megan Smith and Denise Schellink, over the three years of 2012 to 2015, ushered in the era that led to where we are now, 2015 to 2020. The house that built me, the house that as a spiritual community has been part of building each and every one of us. And for those who are still alive at different points that have been part of this can touch that and remember it and be with it while at the same time recognizing that we are in the flow of that divine beloved essence that never ceases. It is always asking us to come along and at the same time to come home. Because home is where the heart is when we talk about ourselves as individuals. And we hearken to this song of Miranda Lambert's. I know they say you can't go home again. I just had to come back one last time. Ma'am, I know you don't know me from Adam, but those handprints on the front steps are mine. We can touch those for ourselves. She said, I thought if I could touch this place or feel it, that the brokenness inside of me might start healing. Out here, it's like I'm somewhere else. I thought maybe I could find myself. And just as Jesus was teaching, we go within to find our true home that is the Christ essence that is us, while we can remember and know that this was simply a part of who we are. I don't know about you folks, but I would not want to be sleeping in the same twin bed that I slept in when I was eight years old. <laughs> I've outgrown that bed, right? I was thinking with... Um, Grandbaby number one, who turned 18 this year. Last week, we went to do some shopping together because she's wanting, she wanted to transition the decor of her room from what she had when she was a freshman in high school to now represent where she is as a freshman in college. And seeing this, once again, now the second generation, because 
been through it with the daughter, you know, and seeing it now in this next generation. That it is part of what we are built out of, part of what is important to who we are. I think, would I want to still be sitting on the same sofa that I was sitting on when I was a kid? <laughs> I, my relatives, oh God bless them, my aunts, all of their furniture was covered with plastic. I see some heads nodding on that one. So that it wouldn't mess up the fabric, everything was covered in plastic. And let me tell you, they, they lived in New York, and when we would go visit, because we lived in California for a period of time, when we would go visit them when we, you know, in New York, and I remember being in my aunt's apartment in Brooklyn, you know, and it's hot, it's humid, you have on shorts, you're sitting on this plastic-covered couch, and I know you go to stand up, and it rips just the back of your legs off, you know? Oh, my God, no, do not want to be sitting on the same sofa. These are the parts that are the memories that are part of who make us that we bring with us, but we know that we cannot live in the past. We cannot stay there because there represents what was needed then, and here and now is the emergence of what is needed, specifically right here. So as we continue in these weeks ahead, I know that we are unable to do physical hugs with one another, but we can do the virtual hugs. Let us stay close and connected to one another as reminders of where we have been while at the same time holding our arms open for where it is that we are going. We are a beacon of light and love. This light and love is what harmonizes us and pulls us into the fulfillment of the evolutionary impulse as it reveals itself for us individually and collectively in each and every now moment. God bless you. This is the time in our service where we share of our gifts and tithes and offerings. Same kind of drum roll idea. The same place that you text to receive the link for the app when you put in Unity of Pasadena app, one word. That same number, 77977, is where you can text to make a contribution. In that case, you simply put in Unity of Pasadena and a link will come up for you to be able to make your contribution. Uh, so please know whether you're doing it on your iPhone or Android uh, device that has the ability to uh, fulfill that for you. If you're holding that in your hand, if you're holding a check, cash, whatever it is that you are holding right now for the way that you bless our community, hold it in your hand and please join me in our offertory blessing. God is the source of my overflowing supply and I am grateful and our wonderful music team have another gift for us.
Thank you, Sarah and Levi. Spirit is in this place. Let's raise the roof. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Welcome to all of you, as I mentioned before, who may be joining us on YouTube or Facebook, no matter where you are. If you're new to Unity, Unity of Pasadena, we welcome you. Wherever you may be on your journey of faith, you are welcome here. One of the things that we do like to say, and this holds true whether you're new or someone who has been part of our community for an extended period of time, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, we behold, ah, we appreciate you just the way you are. I started to do, okay, I'm going to do it since that's how it came out. We used to say it, which is maybe something that will go back to once I'm gone. You know, that tends to happen. Sometimes people pull something forward that the minister changed, that they would like to have be back to the way it was. But we'd say, we love you, we bless you. We appreciate you just the way you are. We behold the Christ in you. And so we behold the Christ in you. We'll close our service with the prayer for protection and a postlude of the peace song. And so together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever God is, I am, and all is well.